Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so if that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. Today I want to share more brands you'll probably never see me review here on this channel. And the reasons always range from pretty much petty reasons, but the majority of the times I feel like they're either overhyped or they're just brands that my skin doesn't get along with. And I always have to stress that these are my personal opinions, my personal experience. Just because I'm going to say I don't like them or that I'll never use them, it doesn't mean the brand is bad in any way. I'm no voice of authority when it comes to that. If you love these products, keep using them. More importantly, if you love them, tell me why you love them. And if any of these brands are your favorites, please, please share with me your favorite product from that brand. So after a few more of these videos, I'll be doing a skincare routine full of brands that I'd never use products, you know? Almost like a skincare routine of products I don't like kind of thing. But I'm hoping in that video I'll come around to a few brands based on your suggestions of what you love from that brand. Anyway, today I've tried to focus on really popular brands that you see a lot here on YouTube. So let's start off with the first one that I want to get out of the way, and that is CeraVe. CeraVe? It depends how posh you want to be. For me, CeraVe, 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 I'm going to call it CeraVe, is the fruit and vegetables of the skincare world. And what I mean by that is they are perfectly good. Actually, they're very good skincare products, very, very safe for all skin types. Dermatologists recommend CeraVe all the time. A very, very good skincare brand, but their products bore the f out of me. <laughs> like fruit and vegetables. It's the brand you know you should probably just be using, but you wanna try something a little bit naughtier, you know? They have an amazing eye cream that I've actually used and have actually reviewed on this channel. Very basic, everything you kind of need from an eye cream. And I've tried one of their moisturizers and it was a good moisturizer. It was a little bit like thicker than I thought it was gonna be, but it was good. My skin didn't react to it in any way. My oily skin dealt with it. In fact, every single product I've used of theirs is good. But here's the thing. Skincare is a hobby of mine, as you can tell from my shelf. <laughs> I collect skincare. I love trying new and exciting skincare products, packaging. I'm a sucker for packaging. And my skincare routine for me is a time to relax and I f find a lot of joy in doing my skincare routine and I like it to be fun. But for me, CeraVe products make me feel like I've just come out of a hospital with, I don't know, like a skin fungus condition. <laughs> and CeraVe is what the nurse prescribed to me, and it makes me feel bored. So as I mentioned, as I always mention as a skincare enthusiast, I love nice textures and packaging, and the products have a nice feel to them. All things at the end of the day don't really matter if the product is just good for you, like CeraVe products are. I do have to say, and I have this problem with Cetaphil as well, is the packaging looks like an A-level graphic design project. Again, it has that kind of medicinal pharmacy feel to it, which fits in perfectly with their brand and is a great representation of what the products actually are. They are very good for you. But for me, it's just no fun. It's no fun whatsoever. I'm not saying I want like fragrance and colors and whatever else is in fun products. I just don't want to feel like I've got a skin condition that I'm using these products purely to heal. And that's what I feel like these products are for me. I get so much fun out of my skincare routine and CeraVe for me is just a bit of a downer. So when you hear dermatologists say, you CeraVe, it's like your mum asking you to eat your vegetables, you know? <laughs> Let's talk about Tatcha. Tatcha, Tatcha. You have no idea how much I want to try this brand. A lot of people ask me my opinions on it. I've never tried it. I desperately want to try it. And despite a lot of the online reviews being very 50-50 as to whether they're actually worth of a money or not, I still really, really want to try a lot of their products. But plain and simple, I can't afford it. I'd like to be able to buy food to live, you know? And I don't know whether starving myself for a week is worth a moisturizer. Maybe it is. No, it's not. No, eat your food. I feel like Tatcha is a brand, I wanna say Tatcha so bad. My, my Englishness wants to say Tatcha. I feel like they're a brand where you buy one thing from them and you're like, oh, that's my good moisturizer or oh, that's my good eye cream. And no one else is allowed to use it. And when you use it, you really indulge yourself in it. You know, you make a huge deal out of using it. Like it's a really special occasion, like every night. And my God, their packaging, it would look amazing on my vanity. They have that purpley, pinky, ready kind of packaging. I actually made a wish list before doing this video to see exactly what I wanted and how much it would come to. I actually tried to be sensible and I only picked six products, thinking, oh, this will be okay. But it came to just under $600. That's like a lot. <laughs> so I don't think I'll ever be reviewing 
Tatcha Tatcha as a brand. Maybe the odd product here and there because it is just too expensive. I hope, I hope to the gods, whatever they may be, that is worth the money. But I'd also feel guilty for recommending it, knowing that you can get so many amazing products, especially when it comes to K-Beauty, you get so many amazing products for the price of one of their moisturizers, like $60, I think. But I don't know, maybe Christmas, who knows? I just really wanna quickly touch on La Mer as well. It's the same thing with La Mer where I really wanna try it. I get asked about it all the time, but I am a big believer in more expensive doesn't equal better because it's true. But La Mer and Tatcha, I feel like are maybe that one-off where it could be worth the money, really hoping it could be worth the money. That's purely judging by a lot of the reviews I've seen. I mean, they do both have their fair share of gimmicky products um, and looking at the price, you're paying a lot for the packaging as well because the packaging is so, so nice with both brands. But I just cannot justify spending that amount of money on anything really. Now I've got a kid to look after. Let's move on to Drunk Elephant. By far, this is the brand that I get asked about every single day especially on, actually mainly only on Instagram, is are you gonna review Drunk Elephant? What do you think of this product by Drunk Elephant? You should try this product by Drunk Elephant. I can list a few, quite a few reasons why I won't be reviewing Drunk Elephant. So here's a few. Their Suspicious Six campaign that highlighted six toxins within skincare was the perfect example of modern fear mongering within the skincare cosmetics world. The Suspicious Six included essential oils, drying alcohols, silicones, chemical sunscreens, fragrances slash dyes, and SLS. And yes, while maybe half of those are things that a lot of people would like to avoid in their skincare, silicones, chemical sunscreens, and some would even argue SLS aren't really that big a deal. They're definitely not toxic. And it's a perfect example of brands that pick out these little ingredients um, that have this huge fear-mongering thing around them and using it to sell their idea of what clean beauty is. It drives me crazy. My second point is their customer service. Not only how they speak to their customers, but also how they react to negative reviews online. In my opinion, Drunk Elephant is popular because of their packaging. It looks nice on Instagram. Um, YouTuber influencers made it popular. Bloggers, etc., etc., made their brand what it is today. Day. So when you see members of their staff lashing out at bloggers who have one criticism of their um, product, it's a very weird thing to do and it makes you think negatively of the brand rather than looking at that negativity and thinking, okay, how can we take this on and improve our product? They throw a little strop and lash out and make little bitchy comments. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, Google drunk elephant Caroline Irons and it'll all come up. But it's not just this blogger that they've had issues with in, in the past, they've also left other comments. But I don't have the patience to talk about this because people who have a superiority complex because they work for or are associated with a big brand piss me off like no one cares no one cares get over yourself and three more importantly in my opinion going by reviews their products are fine but that's it they're fine they're okay. There are the odd product that people really, really seem to love. Um, one of the famous products L'Oreal took them to court over for basically copying their ingredients. I'll link down below to a news article about that. But the rest of their products are pretty much hit or miss, judging by reviews again. If I want to know about a product, I'll come onto YouTube and I'll look for a review. And that's how I'm gonna make up my mind whether I want to buy that product or not. And I'm not about to spend over 50 quid for a product that might just be okay. It's not like the ordinary where if you don't like the product, you've wasted three pounds maybe. This is if you don't like the product, you've wasted 50 quid. And every time I've gone to put drunk elephant products in a basket, whatever website it may be, I never press checkout because I'm just so hesitant. Even the minis, I'm like, I don't wanna spend that much money on loads of products that I might not even like. What I will say though, is they are one of the very few clean beauty brands that don't do all that natural is better stuff. They'll use what they feel is the most effective ingredient, whether it's synthetic or natural. And I do like that, but it's not enough to make me think, oh, I'll support them by your products. Let's talk about Pixie. I tried to like Pixie. I really tried. I feel like Pixie are a very, um, 
what's the word? Accessible brand. I feel like wherever you live, you can get your hands on Pixie. I actually did like one of their products. It was like a milky mist thing and it was really, really good. I used up the whole bottle, but I'm, I won't be repurchasing it. But I really struggle to like the smell of any of their products. And it's usually very, very unnecessary fragrance, usually rose. And I say this every time, I don't avoid fragrance, but I certainly don't go out looking for it. But Pixie just seemed to shove rose smell everywhere, like everywhere, and I'm not a fan of it. I feel like putting fragrance in a chemical exfoliator, so their Pixie Glow Tonics, makes it potentially a thousand times, not, you know, not exact figures at all, but makes it so much more irritating. I just feel like uh, fragrance is a weird thing to put in a chemical exfoliator. No, is that right? Like you're doubling up the irritation, you know? But one of the main issues I have about Pixie is um, the vast amount of products that they have to offer. Um, you know, I like brands with a lot of products. COSRX have a lot of products, but a lot of them I feel like make sense to a particular group of people, a particular skin type. Pixie just seem to be throwing products out there. We already know there is so much noise in the skincare industry, the skincare world. A lot of brands do just put unnecessary products out there. And nowadays, you know, there's a new ingredient for every single issue you have and everyone's trying to use everything. And it gets very, very confusing. And I don't feel like Pixie is helping um, narrow things down anyway whatsoever. I feel like they're um, just releasing products for the sake of making money. And they have this real thing of like, just making their products, releasing products that might look nice in a bottle, I personally feel. Here's a few products that I think are just a cash grab. Rose Quartz Soothing Oil. It's like, is that a bit of, what is that? <laughs> Jasmine Oil Blend, I feel like is something no one needs. Pink Salt Cleansing Oil. <laughs> this is a cleansing oil with a shit ton of salt in it. I feel like that's that just doesn't make sense to me. Apparently it detoxes the skin, but I would be suspicious about any product that uses the word detox, to be honest. On the Glow, a travel friendly moisturizer in the form of a um, deodorant stick. Phenomenal gel. <laughs> And another example of we just want to make the product look pretty and shove a load of stuff in it is their Rose Caviar Essence. I just feel like it's so unnecessary. And just everything, every product there seems to have an insane amount of oils in it, an insane amount of natural fragrance too. There's so many flower and plant extracts in this that I feel like technically these products should be referred to as salads. There's just so much um, plant in it. It's just not for me at all. I was gonna talk about Neutrogena, um, but I might leave it for like the next video and kind of like touch a bit more on it. But for me, I just feel like, but just my own personal opinion, Neutrogena for me was a teenager brand growing up I feel. I feel like it's a brand every teenager uses. Their products are very very basic. I feel like they've really hit the nail on the head with the Hydro Boost Gel. You know every brand has their version of this Hydro Boost Gel. But everything else for me is just a little bit teenagery. Um, you know you have your stripping cleansers, you have your normal cleansers. And for me it's just a bit like you know grateful kids and teenagers. For, for adults, not so much. I don't know, what do you think of Neutrogena? I know a lot of people love that hydro gel. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And let me know the brands that you're not really ever interested in using. Please don't forget, if you love any of these brands, let me know what products you think are a must have from them, especially when it comes to Tarcha and Le Mer. I really want to know what, Le Mer, Le Mer. I really want to know what ones are worth the money in your opinion. So leave that in the comments as well. But that's that's it for me now guys, I will see you next time.